Today we're going to look at the balance of payments and all its different components. To define the balance of payments, you would say that it's a record of all the economic transactions between a country and the rest of the world. So to put it more simply, the balance of payments is like a giant receipt that shows all the money transfers coming in and out of a country in different areas of the economy within a certain time period. This is a very important indicator of a country's external stability and sheds some light into that country's relationship with the global economy overall. Now, before we can go any further, it's important to introduce some terminology. We will refer to any inflows of money into a country as a credit on the balance of payment, and any money going out of that country is known as a debit. So be sure to remember these. The balance of payments can be divided into two accounts, the current account and the capital and financial account. The current account shows receipts and payments from trade, transfer payments and income flows over a given time period. And these transactions, we know them to be irreversible. They are irreversible in the sense that once these transactions have occurred, they cannot be undone. So for example, once dividends or profits have been distributed out to shareholders, the shareholders do not give or return the money back to the company. The CAFA, on the other hand, records the borrowing, lending, sales and purchasing of assets for that country. Now, unlike the current account, these transactions are reversible. This is because once these transactions have occurred, they can be undone in the future. For example, an asset that has been bought can be sold again. So once we have our two accounts, they can be broken down even further. The current account can be divided into three smaller accounts. The balance on goods and services, net primary income, and net secondary income. So let's look at these in depth. The balance on goods and services, commonly known as the BOGS, is the amount derived from adding net services and net goods together as shown below. Now the BOGS can also sometimes be referred to as the trade balance, and this is because the trade that occurs from countries exporting and importing goods and services every day is recorded in this account. The net primary income account includes all the income that has been earned from investment choices. More simply, it includes all the short-term financial flows that occur as a result of long-term investment. For example, investing in businesses in the long term can lead to short-term income flows of profits and or dividends. The net secondary income account refers to non-market transfers, and this is when financial resources are transferred between countries without providing a good or service in return. Three transactions you would usually find in this account are Payouts on insurance claims, workers' remittances such as foreigners working in a country and then sending money back overseas, or unconditional aid to developing nations. Now the aid is unconditional because funds are given as a gift and they're not to be used for any specific purpose. So we've now summarized the current account. Let's have a look at the capital and financial account. The capital and financial account can be broken down into two very simply named accounts, the capital account and the financial account. The capital account consists of two main components, the first of which is the purchase and selling of non-financial assets. Now this includes intellectual property rights such as patents, copyrights and franchises. The second component is capital transfers which includes things like debt forgiveness and conditional foreign aid. Now unlike the unconditional foreign aid found on the current account, this aid is given to specific developing countries to be used for investment purposes, such as building a new school. Now the financial account shows all the transactions in terms of foreign financial assets and liabilities. So these are all the outflows and inflows of investment and foreign debt going in and out of that country. In the financial account, these are the types of transactions that would be recorded. Firstly, direct or portfolio investment. Now direct investment is where investors buy more than 10% worth of shares in a company and portfolio investment is when they purchase less than 10%. Other types of transactions can include financial derivatives, reserve assets and other investment options such as foreign debt. Now that we've looked at the components of the capital and financial account, we can look at the balance of payments as a whole. But to make sense of these trends and patterns in the balance of payments, we need to make some calculations first. 
To calculate the current account, you simply add the balance of goods and services with the net primary income and the net secondary income. If the solution is a negative number or less than zero, this means that there are more outflows of money leaving the country than money coming in, and we call this a deficit. On the other hand, if the solution is a positive number or greater than zero, this means that there are more inflows of money entering the country, and we call this a surplus. To calculate the CAFA, you just add the balances on the capital account to the financial account. And similar to the previous account, if the CAFA value is less than zero, there are more investment flows out of the country, and we call that a deficit. But if it's a positive value, then there is investment flowing into the country, and we call that a surplus. Finally, the balance of payments is easily calculated by just adding the current account and the capital and financial account to equal to zero. Mathematically, what this means is that when one account's value is positive or in a surplus, then the other account must be negative or in a deficit to the same amount. It is in this way that the balance of payments actually balances out. And the same works in reverse. So a basic example would be that if the current account was in a surplus of $100, then the value of the CAFA would have to be a $100 deficit or negative $100. So that's the balance of payments summarized up for you. For more economics videos, please subscribe below.